The family at Express Boats has always strived to be the best. And now they're trying to help their customers be even better at what they do. And that's what I think is so cool about this new series called Express Outdoors is the fact that it relates to X's and O's. And how can you strategize to be the best you can be when you're out on the water enjoying the outdoor experience. Whether we're on Kentucky Lake or down in South Louisiana here at Gros Savon, or even in Arkansas chasing mylons in the timber, join us for the Express Outdoors experience. Hey guys, Doug Miller. My day job, manager at Gros Savon Lodge. But as you can see, we're not in South Louisiana today. I've been asked to do a really cool thing. I'm host of a new webisode series called Express Outdoors. And today, my partner in crime, Dollar Bill Logan. Hey guys, it's gonna be a cool deal today. We're on a lake, as you can see behind me, that neither one of us ever, ever been on. So we don't have any idea what we're getting ourselves into, but we're gonna go out there, we're gonna have fun, and that's what it's all about when you're in the great outdoors, having fun. It's all about him, thanks for the cookie. I got my cookie. Yes. I'm on a diet. I guess there's some fish in here, huh? Well, it was yesterday. I don't know where they're at today. Well, that's the story of my life. Day <laughs> late, dollar short. Yeah. Should have been here yesterday, or yeah. you should be here in a week. I don't I don't fish. I quit fishing. Yeah? Several years ago. Well, look, if you caught them as good as I did, you'd quit too. Oh, no. no, I caught, when I fish, I caught fish. Uh-oh. So I got this invite to go to Kentucky Lake. Uh, the Elite Series had made a stop on Kentucky Lake and flew into Nashville, got picked up and drove over to the weigh-in and met Bill Lowen. And, and Bill, first thing right off the bat, says, man, it, it, it's going to be tough. Uh-oh. Yes. Is this, that's, that's not a bad. What is that? Is that a jinx to catch that kind of fish on the first cast? finger in there and you'll come out like this <laughs> so when you're flipping do you what is there a range of depth you look for you want to try to find a hard edge where those fish can't get back in the woods on you you can see here the water is all the way back in there yep um, like we said when we started we've never been here before so we don't know what we're getting into but typically almost like a backstop mm -hmm. we're gonna keep hunting and pegging around until we find it typically like on a flooded bush deal if you find that hard edge something that sits out here in front of you like this, something isolated, it's typically a home run for two guys that are, you know, in a yep. tournament together, a buddy tournament, this is perfect. Typically one guy will be flipping and one guy will be fishing like you're doing right now, you know, throwing a fast bait, a moving bait of some sort. Yeah, there's nothing like both guys parallel in the bank. Yeah, you can stay in the strike yeah. zone the whole time. That means a lot. Typically on the front end of a boat, it comes in so tight and narrow that That's you right. guys couldn't do this hell. Probably get another guy in between us. Yeah, and you, you've been able to work the trolling motor without bumping shoulders or yep. ready and clack the rods yet. Uh oh. oh what a fish. Heck yeah. Uh -oh. Here we go. Look at here. Something, that's something pulling back. This might be the right species, too. Is that what you call a Tennessee bass? Huh? Oh, uh, yeah. I'm liking it now. Like we were saying when we were coming up through there, the water's high, it's flooded way back into the woods, right? This was the very first spot that we found that hard edge where the water wasn't back in the woods. And look what happened. Doug got him a bite. Um, so that's a tip to remember when the water's high and the water's flooded way back in the woods, try to find that hard edge where the fish can't get away from you. What model lose reel is this? Uh, team lose light. Yeah, they make a great reel. You know what, they make so many reels. Um, and so many great reels at the, at the right prices, but it seems like I just keep gravitating back to that lose light. It feels good in my hand. And yeah, gross of on the uh, speed spool. Right. That's, you know, for the money, that is just the best. You know, you can't beat it. We've, Do you guys supply, like, yeah. clients when they come in, they get to use Yeah, we got rod and reels on the premises. You just need to show up is all you gotta do. You know, that's kind of the whole whether you're a kid or your spouse or just a novice that hasn't fished, we wanted to design a lake that everybody could catch something. You know, it's not just for the avid, diehard bass fishermen. And so 
you got the chance to catch a lot of fish, whether it's bass or crappie or brim, and then you got that Florida strain that's in there that you know there's still some giants swimming around there. So it's uh, it's been a really cool deal. It's worked out very well. You know, it's 50 fish a day is probably a common trip. You never know if you're gonna have a five, six, seven, and possibly like a 10 pounder this past weekend with one group, so. Yeah, you know, we always just keep talking about the bass fishing. You all have world-class duck hunting as well. Absolutely, and I mean, you've seen I've a, never got invited on well, that. Well, hey, well, actually you did. Oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> I had to go. Yeah, that's right. That's, it was, that was, uh, Thanksgiving, you gotta be with your family That's during right. Thanksgiving. Yeah, we can't blame you for that one. Right. Our logo is GS365 and it really fits because we're not just a hunting or fishing operation. We got stuff going on year round from duck and goose, bass. We do a lot of saltwater fishing, redfish, speckled trout, flounder. Alligator season in September is a, a real fun alligators. time. We catch over 200 alligators in about a two week period. So. Uh, and then we do eco tours too, so, you know. So can people come and experience the whole alligator thing? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, there's nothing like killing alligator, have your boots and belts, a wallet made, and combine that with a bass fishing or red fishing trip could, one afternoon. You can't could, beat it. Could you see me with alligator belt, alligator boots? I think that would be you. Let's go find somewhere else. Continue moving down the bank, and it didn't take Bill long to realize this, this is not what we needed to be doing. So the water's too high. We make our move back onto Kentucky Lake. Feels good though, this spot turning me on. <clears throat> this is turning me on right here. <laughs> get up, get up, get up. I told you I was feeling it, dude. You're the man, dude. <clears throat> I told you I was feeling oh, it. Oh, it's a big one, too. I told you I was feeling it. I got my mic all wrapped up. <sighs> I told you I was feeling it. Oh, that's what I'm talking about. Nice. Ooh, now look, it. now look, Heck yeah. you catch a five pounder, <laughs> I catch a five <laughs> incher. So we struggled as the day went on. We knew it wasn't going to be a, a fast and furious action, but we hammered out four or five good go. bass that morning and we took a quick break for lunch and, and we went back out and tried a whole different new area. Did I mention the day we caught them here it was pouring down rain and overcast? Oh, you forgot that part. <laughs> uh oh, there you go. Hey, I swam that by the bush <laughs> and come out of there and got he it. ate it huh? he's making Used a come him a few days ago he's making a comeback nice well, you want to get, you get up here so you can get closer get, get in the zone there you starting to catch up i had to pull you off oh i see how this is working a lot of these pros have three depth finders but i noticed you you've stuck with two what's your thought process behind that well you know typically guys will have two big units up here because they want to run the map on one and a, and a depth finder on the other, okay? You know, with the Humminbird with the 12-inch Helix, you just split the screen and you can get both of them, you know what I mean? So, me being a shallow water guy, I mean, look, I don't have any problems fishing offshore when I have to, um, but I don't see the benefit of having two up there, you know? So if I want to run split screen, if I want to run 360, um, side imaging, whatever it may be, I just split the screen, one unit works great for me. I'm gonna show you a little tip with your electronics. You know, all you hear all the time with electronics is offshore, graph and drops, looking for fish, you know, catching fish off the graph. But I'm gonna show you a little tip here to help you catch more fish uh, when you're fishing like we are here today, up shallow in the flooded bushes and places like that. Hummingbird has Lake Master mapping, which is some of the, the, the most phenomenal mapping that I've ever seen in a boat. Let me get to a full screen here. Like I said, you always hear about offshore structure fishing when you're looking at your unit, okay? This week here on Kentucky Lake, the pattern for me would be, I could run the back of any pocket and find a drain coming in. You can see this little blue line. We call that a drain. That's an old creek channel that comes in there. And the bite for me was any of the bushes that were sitting right on that drain, um, I could get a bite out of, okay? So what happened here this week is the water level fell and killed my pattern. So I basically had to start all over. But all you had to do was, let me zoom back out here a little bit. Look at your map. And as you can see, we're in a creek right now that has a drain in it, okay? You have two pockets here that don't have drains in it. Yeah, you may be able to catch fish in it, but once you figure out that pattern, all you gotta do is look at your Lake Master mapping and you can run the lake and duplicate that pattern.
And this area had a real shallow bank, clean bank, and you could see down three or four feet. And Bill actually started spotting a few bedding fish that were still left over, which was surprising because we thought that had all ended by now. And when Bill saw those fish keying in on those beds, it was lights out for him because he done kicked me to the curb because I was already a couple of fish ahead of him and he wasn't going to finish the day and let me beat him. Finally. Ooh, Ooh. broke my rod. I guess it's worth it. Big bass, broken rod. Gotta love it. Gosh, that's so much fun. Sight fishing right there. Sight fishing 101. <laughs> Pulled up, seen her on the bed. She spooked. We sat there and waited for her to come back to see where her bed was. Got her. I kept telling Doug all the way down through there. I cannot believe we haven't seen one on the bed yet. Oh, hey girl, what's up? Giant. <laughs> So when I think about X's and O's, uh, I envision a football team sitting around a chalkboard in a, in a locker room trying to strategize how to win the next game. And whether it be life in general or hunting and fishing, we all want to strive to be the best that we can be. And I think it's pretty cool that they're trying to help their customers be even better at what they do. You know, Bill, one thing I'm guilty of is fishing too fast. When I come up to a lay down like this, I usually just hit the obvious stuff, but how would you approach this and fish it effectively? What I like to do is, if I think there's five fish in that tree, I want to catch all five of them, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to position this boat before I even make a cast of that tree, okay? What I want to do is hit the high percentage areas. So typically what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull basically into the front of this tree because I want to start working on the outside edge first. I never want to go into the, what I call the meat and potatoes of the tree and destroy it and ruin it, okay? Talon down so I don't have to worry about fighting this trolling motor. So then what we're going to do is we're going to look at this tree and think, what is our high percentage areas, okay? And to me, it's going to be anywhere that the main part of the tree or the biggest part of the tree is, uh, the trunk, the, you know, the, the, the big limbs, whatever that may be. As you can see, as we sit here and look at this, you'll see where the big trunks go in, see this little shade pockets and those are the areas that them fish are going to set in so as we sit out here you know and I like I said I want to start on the outside of the tree so I get all that I can out of this tree so I'm gonna go here first to this little one and typically if he's in there he's gonna bite it okay so my next cast may be to this side okay and all I'm gonna do is go through here and pick this apart and work so you just keep working on the little shady spots just like that I'm gonna work the whole front of this tree all the way around there, okay? If I don't get a bite, then I'm gonna go around the tree and start getting into the meat and potatoes of the tree, okay? So, if there's five fish in that tree, I wanna to try to catch every one of them instead of just one of them, okay? So if you start on the outside and work your way in, typically if there's one or two fish in that tree, you can typically catch them. We just wrapped up a long day of fishing on Kentucky Lake. It was tough, but it's always a pleasure to get to fish with Bill Lowen. You know, I've been here for a week for the elites. It was tough for me here, um, you know, but we had a ball today. We caught some good fish, um, got to catch some fish off the bed, which is always fun. So yeah, man, it's always good to spend a good day on the water with a great friend. That's right. I appreciate it. I'm glad you came. Can't wait to get back and fish with you. The next time you see me as host of the show, Bill will be down at Gros Savon ripping some lips down there in the yeah, marsh. I can't wait, man. That's going to be a blast. It's always a good time to go there and hang out with you guys. At the end of the day, you know, Kentucky Lake was a grind for Bill and I. We fished basically from daylight to dark, and we probably caught 10 good keeper fish with a couple kickers. And I got off to a good start and kind of, kind of was kicking the pro's butt there for a while. But uh, I have to say at the end of the day, when Bill got on those sight fish, I just moved to the back of the boat. And I gotta give it to him. Bill, you did win this one, but I'm gonna get you the next time. Yeah. We ain't even clacked rods yet. And we ain't got to set the hook yet, so no. I don't know if I'm gonna hit you across the face yeah. when I do. Well. <laughs> <laughs> what size weight are you pitching? Just a quarter, you'll be good. All right. <laughs> yeah, fish. <laughs>
Oh, Louisiana. <laughs> Is that the tri Tennessee trifecta? A garfish, a catfish, and a, what's that other thing, a pickerel? He said, oh, big fish. I seen it out there spinning. I was like, yeah, not what you want, bud. What else? Name something. I'll see if I can catch it. Now, if you let me catch that catfish, we would have had supper. <laughs>